God's Word, participate in the sacraments and all those things. Those of you joining us on our Facebook live stream, we're glad you're here as well. Well, as much as it may surprise you, this is a reading that is centered entirely on prayer. The whole thing is centered on prayer. The first part is pretty clear, so you're probably thinking, well, thanks for that, Captain Obvious, because that is what Jesus starts off talking about. He introduces part of what we call now the, the Lord's Prayer. That's pretty straightforward. But what in the world does the rest of our reading today have to do with prayer? Everything, as it turns out. This reading in Matthew 6 is a reading that centers our life in prayer, our entire life. Not just the part where we're actually praying, is that's a little too obvious, but all the other parts of it our life that are perhaps not quite so obvious. And the first thing uh, Jesus tells us when he's talking about prayer is he does not want us to be show-offs. Showing off to God just strikes me as a little silly, and to be honest with you, I don't know anybody off the top of my head that actually shows up before God or tries to impress God. I do know, however, that there are people who are followers of Christ who enjoy being the center of attention just for attention's sake. They like, like to put on shows of piety and religious expertise. Uh, every generation knows their examples. If you're on social media, a, a good example is the, the folks that uh, throw out the like, share if you love Jesus, uh, but if you deny me, God will deny you. you know, those, those memes, have you seen those? Yeah, I'm getting nods of recognition. You've seen those. You know that's an, a complete misuse of Matthew 10, uh, verses 16 to 33. And go ahead and take a look, look that up, and uh, remember that, because it's important. Those are a misuse of God's word. The whole drawing attention to yourself in the way we do our faith things, the way we draw attention to ourselves for personal gain, is problematic. And Jesus says, "Do not do that." Kind of like that fasting thing. There were people in Jesus' day who, as a spiritual discipline, who, as a matter of faith, used fasting. It's not everybody's thing to do that. But fasting is a completely legitimate way of, of experiencing God and experiencing faith. But there were people in Jesus' day that wandered around looking like they were in pain. Like, once again... Attempting to draw attention to themselves so that others can be impressed with how faithful they are. Again, every generation has examples of folks who act like this. A contemporary equivalent on social media would be people who like to vague book, you know, putting the obscure and uh, vague comment out there to generate likes and comments. Once again, drawing attention to yourself this way is just not the way to go. And if it's a faith practice you're using to draw attention to yourself, Jesus would have one thing to say. Don't do that. But not to mention, being a follower of Christ is not supposed to be painful. It's just not. This might be one of those uh, downsizing moment kind of things that's real popular right now. What's, what's your name, Kendo? Marie Kondo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you don't love, if something doesn't bring you joy, get rid of it. Well, I would suggest that if you have a spiritual discipline or a faith practice that causes you pain, get rid of it. Find something that brings you joy. Find something that brings you joy. So prayer is the center of our life. All right, fair enough. What does the rest of the reading have to do with prayer being the center of our life? Because Jesus jumps into that part that... Uh, is the biblical basis for probably 78% of stewardship sermons. And that's, you know, don't store up your stuff on earth, store it up in heaven. That whole part of don't store your, your goodies on earth because moth will eat your goodies, rust will destroy your goodies, and thieves will come to steal your goodies. Instead, put it in heaven where moths and rust will not destroy it, nor will anybody get their grubby mitts on your goodies in heaven. And so, as we discussed at the annual meeting last week, this is the point in the sermon where I say, all right, you guys, pony up. Cough up the cash now. Hospitality folks, grab the offering plates. Let's get this done. 
But that's not really the point of these verses. Remember how we talk about proof texting and taking one verse or a couple of verses and kind of twisting it out of context into something else. That, that would be, and, and I've done this in, you know, earlier in my life, used these verses to encourage people to be generous stewards, but that's not what they mean. When you take those three verses out of the context of the larger story, then we're misusing it once again. Kind of like we were misusing or mis Matthew 10 gets misused. The same thing here. It's not talking about a stewardship sermon. These three verses out of the 30 that we read. These three verses are situated here because they represent the challenge that our stuff can put in the way of our faith life. It's all well and good. We can use our resources to get more stuff. But the danger is if we get too much stuff, then the stuff becomes our God instead of, well, God. The more things you have, the more time you spend thinking about those things. The more time you spend using those things. The more time you have to spend using, uh, uh, maintain those things. There's nothing wrong with having stuff and things. But when our things become our God, that's where things become problematic. And that's what Jesus is talking about. Don't let our things get in the way of our faith life. When we talked about the children's message, don't let all the things take away the time we can spend in prayer. Now, if you want to pony up, go right ahead. Don't let me stop you. But that's not what this is talking about. Remember the context, the larger context of where these verses, verses are situated. Don't let your goodies become your God. And I wish I'd have thought of that line when I was <laughs> creating stuff on Wednesday and used it for your sermon times because that's a better sermon time. Don't let your goodies become your God. You can post that on social media if you want. <laughs> so prayer is prayer. Prayer is better than stuff. And finally, in the context of our, our story today, the entire reading, prayer is a whole lot better than worry. And that's the final point that Jesus makes here. We are all prone to worry. We all do. And no different than the people in Jesus' day who apparently worry because Jesus is addressing it directly. There are things in our lives that are causes of concern. We have health concerns. We have relationship concerns. We have financial concerns. We have officiating and conference championship concerns. <laughs> Those are real. Well, the last one, not. Well, it actually kind of is. Um, it, that's the reality. We have those concerns. And Jesus isn't saying ignore the things that are concerned. And Jesus isn't saying that at all. Jesus is saying don't spend a lot of time worrying about it. Spending mental, physical, spiritual energy worrying about something never changes a thing. Ever. Not once. Prayer, on the other hand, can move mountains. Not that all of our prayers are answered in the way we expect or want, but prayer changes things. Prayer changes us. Look at it this way. You can engage in the pointless exercise of worrying about this, that, or the other thing. Or you can spend your time in prayer talking with your God about this, that, and the other thing. I guarantee you which one produces results. Prayer will. Worry cannot. Certainly when it comes time to pray, let there be no worrying about prayer. Just talk to God like God is the present God that God is. Let go, God know what's on your mind without worry. So that's how it is that Jesus lines prayer up in our lives. That's how it is that this larger story encompasses prayer being central in our lives. Pray without making a spectacle of yourself. Don't let your things become a thing and get in, the relationship, get in the way of your relationship with God. And don't let your worry take over the mental cycles in your brain and get in the way of your relationship with God. Pray, <coughs> pray, and pray. To God be the glory. Amen. I'd like you to please stand as you are comfortable and able. We continue worshiping song. Thank <clears throat> you.